Hello everyone and welcome to this cartoon movie event. In this conference we're going to talk about animation and production and the way uh, we can reduce carbon footprint, carbon footprint and emissions in this uh, field. So I am Ariane, I'm working at Carnot uh, on the 3D and animation subjects. And I'm Quentin, I'm in charge of the external relations at Carnot. We'd like first to thank all the team for the organization of this event. We would have liked to be in Bordeaux all together and to have a physical event, but we are sure that uh, the next editions will be easier and uh, probably better. But congratulations to all the team for that uh, digital event. First of all, uh, we'd like with Ariane to talk about the IT and the environmental impact of IT. Um, as you may know, uh, to produce our devices, phones, computers, and so on, we need some materials, some metals, some mineral ores as well that we have to go and dig uh, in, 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 on Earth. And this has a huge environmental impact that we often don't see because um, these uh, minerals are digged uh, often in, in China, in Africa, in uh, South America. Um, this impact uh, is uh, a lot about energy consumption, because uh, to dig and to extract these minerals, uh, we need a lot of energy. Um, this is the first thing. Then you, have, uh, you need some energy and you have an impact about production, about manufacturing, then you have an impact in terms of um, transport until the, the end users. And then during the usage, you have a lot of energy consumption too. And to finish that big uh, uh, digital pollution um, uh, issue, you have the final thing, which is uh, the recycling of uh, de uh, IT devices. Um, into this, I'd like to focus a little bit about data centers that are huge factories digital factories and warehouses where plenty, thousands of computers are aligned and installed. These computers are running days and nights so that we can have some services whenever we want. That means that uh, uh, if you need any video or any um, picture during, at night that is storage in, in, in the cloud, you just have to uh, ask for it and you get it. That has a huge environmental impact. Data centers have to be constructed first. That means that you, you need some place and uh, then you have to dig trenches for networks and then you have um, to construct with materials the data center and then you have energy consumption which is one big issue uh, for data centers. Data centers consume a lot of energy first to be empowered and then to be cooled down, refreshed because what you have to understand is what we all have experienced. One computer that works, that runs, is one computer that releases heat. And heat is a huge problem and a huge issue that data centers have to face. So uh, first of all, you have a heat which is wasted. And on the other hand, you have an energy consumption which is just there to refresh and cool down the computers. Um, what we also see is that we need more and more and more data centers just because our usages in terms of IT and digital are getting bigger every day. Um, it has an energy consumption impact and also a CO2 impact, uh, which is uh, beginning to be a, a, a big, big, big issue. Um, what we see is that our usages are getting increased um, and if we want to focus just a little bit about pictures and, and movies, uh, we all know that 4K is becoming one uh, uh, high quality standard and that 4K needs more and more data centers to run so that we can first produce the pictures and then um, send them through the networks. So that is one tendency that we uh, have seen. Um, storage is also something that we see. Um, pictures are getting always better. Um, videos are getting much more fine and this has a, a, a concrete impact because the weight is, is heavier and the storage requires more energy. Uh, I'll leave maybe Ariane um, talk about a little bit more precisely about the animation production and the environmental impact of yeah. the industry.
Kanta has described the global uh, data center issue, polluting issue, the global digital pollution issue, but uh, animation also pollutes a lot and um, a few uh, things in the pipeline, the, the animation pipeline production pollute more than others. So to begin maybe by the, the beginning, uh, animation is, can be divided in three phases. The first one will be uh, the project's brain, which is the pre-production, and is the uh, scenario and the story conception. It means that uh, people will, uh, teams will uh, think about the story, uh, how uh, characters will interact, how characters will be built, and what they will look like. So that's the moment when uh, people think about uh, their uh, psychologies, the concept arts, and everything. Then comes the production phase, which is the heart and blood of the project. And that is um, about modeling and creating really the data that will be used in the post-production phase. Uh, then comes the production phase. Uh, the production phase will uh, be the heart and blood of the project, where uh, artists will model and create uh, the characters and scenes from the scenarios and storyboards made during the pre-production phase. So during this part of the project, artists will model, will texture, will rig, will animate all the characters, all the data created, uh, and, and will interact with each other. Um, this data are created to be uh, used during the post-production phase where the rendering intervenes. Well, rendering is the phase when the final images and frames are synthesized based on all the data crafted by the production's artist before. Rendering an image means using what we know as a rendering engine. There are all sorts of algorithms, but I'm going to focus on the ones that uses um, ray tracing or path tracing algorithms. The idea of these algorithms is to send rays from the camera in the 3D scene that will bounce on the different objects and finally reach a light source. Uh, the trajectory of the rays will be computed according to several uh, physics equations crafted to mimic to the maximum the material's behaviors compared to reality. Rendering takes a lot of time. Uh, it usually depends on several settings, but the more quality the movie has, the longer it has taken to render. To give you an idea, Rendering one image of Toy Story 4, a movie, could take up to 160 hours on a single computer. The settings that can be adjusted are the number of pixels, the number of rays per pixel, the duration of the movie, but also the number of objects in the scene, its complexity, rendering wood is not as complex as rendering glass, if there are simulations, uh, fire, hair, particles, etc, etc. So to come back to the Toy Story 4 example, rendering the entire movie on a single computer would take more than 2,000 years. So the production and the post-production phases are the one using the most resources in terms of IT, energy, construction, etc. because of data centers that are essential to production. Production and rendering uh, for animation uh, requires lots of high performance machines that themselves need energy of course to work but first to be uh, constructed and manufactured this has a huge uh, energy consumption impact and a big ca carbon footprint too this being said let's have a look at the solutions and the progresses that are made towards a greener animation industry. We've understood with Ariane that data centers are one of the key infrastructures in the animation production. Um, we've been talking about the, um, the waste heat from data centers, energy consumption and so on. Um, we have to say that data centers are getting greener and greener. Um, they are taking care of their energy consumption. They are reaching some lower PUE, power usage effectiveness, um, by uh, lowering their, their um, energy consumption for refreshing and for external uh, consumptions, such as lights and so on. Uh, what we also want to highlight is um, the necessity to talk about ERE, which is energy reuse effectiveness, 
that takes into account the heat which, which is reused or which is not reused. But, but the ERE for us is much more significant because heat which is generated by computers should be reused and valorized for other usages. Um, we'll talk maybe a little bit about Carnot, the company we are happy to, to represent. Carnot is a French company that has a, a different and a slightly uh, new approach about data centers. We're an alternative to data centers as we are um, considered as one edge computing solution. Our computers are not uh, concentrated within data centers, but spread wherever heat is needed. That means that computers are brought directly within buildings that have to be heated up. Um, this is a, a little bit singular, and we developed for this to achieve that like uh, ambitious target. We developed um, some heaters and some boilers that embed microprocessors as heat sources. Connected to the uh, fiber optics and internet, these heaters and boilers can render um, the uh, animation movies that Ariane was talking about. That means that instead of sending your tasks to a usual data center, you send them to Carnot and our platform that is called the QWare, and that spreads and distributes absolutely with full security the, uh, the tasks that you gave us, and these tasks are being sent until the heaters and boilers that are installed within buildings. That means that heat, which is generated by computers producing your movie, are heating some other people within housing, within public buildings, schools, swimming pools, and also for heat networks. So instead of having a usual um, uh, heater or boiler within buildings, some people have these Carnot uh, heaters and, and digital boilers. And for you, you just have the same service as another data center, but you just having a very, um, very low impact in terms of, of environment because you're working with a valuable and a sustainable uh, approach. For our computing clients, it is very simple to work with Carlo as we have developed a platform which is called the QWare and that allows our clients to uh, give us the computing tasks, the computations, the renderings that they need on this platform, the QWare, that then distributes uh, in a secured way in a sustainable way, as we've been talking about, in an elastic way, and in a scalable way, all uh, the tasks on our infrastructure. That means that for just a few tasks, or for a big movie, we'll maybe talk about some examples right after, but we are able um, to take in charge all the computations that you have. Quentin talked about the QWare, which is the big software brick that one doesn't see when, when one thinks about Carnot, but which is very important to us because it allows us to dispatch jobs wherever the heat is needed. Uh, the QWare can be used with two uh, main solutions. The first one, which is the most uh, intuitive one, is uh, addressed to artists and is a web interface that you can uh, use with a few buttons, you just need to upload files and folders that uh, are useful for your render. Click on a few buttons to launch your render with Blender, Maya, V-Ray, C4D and more. And then get your render back when it's finished. The second way is to use an API, which is the list of computer science methods used to uh, interact with our system. Uh, the API can be called with several SDKs, Python, c uh, Node.js and are um, very useful when you need to automatize a pipeline or to integrate Carnot to your pipeline. You can send jobs on different types of machines. So Quentin talked about microprocessors inside our heaters and boilers. And these uh, processors are uh, up, uh, goes up to 32 cores with uh, a lot of RAM. So it depends on your needs and we can adapt to it. Using our SDKs, you can monitor thousands of cores that we have deployed in our clusters or boilers or heaters, uh, our whole infrastructure. We are working with Docker, which means that you can bring your own, own Docker image and uh, specify exactly what you need inside your Docker image. 
and then we, it will be dispatched on the, our infrastructure. But we also have uh, available and already uh, ready images that you can use, of course, through our SDK or uh, interface. If you need a custom setup, please get in touch. We have a whole dedicated team of R&D engineers that is here to help you uh, develop Docker images or set up uh, custom data organizations. Um, we are here to help you. So we are working with very talented teams, such as Illumination. So we've been working on the whole renderer of uh, the Minions 2, the Brides of Brew. Uh, it's been a renderer that lasted four months and has been done on uh, a lot of machines, meaning 16,000 cores. Uh, that represents almost a thousand computers, a thousand microprocessors that has uh, that were in warehouses, and uh, have helped heat warehouses. So we hope that we will be able to see it in cinemas and uh, in cinema rooms, uh, hopefully soon enough. We've also been working with Tu nous as pas vu, which is a French studio based in Arles and Annecy in France. And they have been working on uh, Team Dronix, which is a series made for one of the French top TV channels. Dronix mode scanner. Another project that is dear to our hearts is the one of Econem. Econem is a French uh, business, a French company, uh, whose objective is to um, uh, save, to digitalize. Um, historic monuments and historic buildings that are endangered and on the verge of uh, being destroyed. Thank you very much, Ariane, for your explanations. You've seen uh, on your screen some of the movies we've been rendering in the past uh, weeks and months. We hope that it will give you some ideas to work together. Thanks for your attention. We hope this conference about environmental impacts of animation production was interesting. Uh, all the team is here to help you if you need. Have a look at our website, carnot.com, and you can write us also if you need. We'll be happy to answer at contact at carnot.com. Thank you very much and see you soon. Thank you.